<laughs> I'm so glad you could join me today. I've got a couple of my little friends here, a couple of little baby squirrels. Today I have a little gray squirrel right here. This is a little gray squirrel, and the other one's a fox squirrel. They're just little babies, well, three or four weeks old. Aren't they precious, though? I just adore these little critters. I just thought I'd share them with you before we get started here. Hi, guy. How you fellas doing today? They are something else. There. They are absolutely precious. As you notice, though, the fox squirrel is much larger than the little gray squirrel. And that's the same way they'll be when they grow up. Okay, I guess we have to go to work, guys. Hey, you ready to go to work? Okay. Tell you what, let's start out and run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. While they're doing that, and I'll set these little fellas down. Come on, you ready to go? Isn't he precious? Yeah, you gotta go now. Time for me to go to work. And I've covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of the liquid white. So it's wet and it's all slick and it's ready to go. And so let's just have fun today. Let's start out today with a little bit of Indian yellow. Let's just do a painting that's fun. I'm gonna take a little Indian yellow and just go up here and make little crisscross strokes and start like so. The Indian yellow, as with every color we use, is mixing with the liquid white and it allows us to literally blend color right on the canvas. Maybe a little yellow ochre right on top of that. Right in there, something like that. That's all there is to it. But these little crisscross strokes make it much easier to blend color together than making stripes. So just use little crisscross strokes. Maybe, maybe we'll use a little alizarin crimson. We'll just use some warm colors back here in the background. Alizarin crimson, it's a beautiful, beautiful, warm, reddish color. There, about like that. And we'll just let that blend right in. Just allow the colors to blend together. All right. Now, I think we can get away with it. I just go into a little bit of thalo blue. The thalo blue is so much stronger than the crimson that we won't even have to clean the brush. We can just go right into it. And let's go up in here. Let's start on the very top, making little, little crisscross strokes again, little X's, and we'll paint the entire remainder of the sky with a little bit of blue. Just bring it, bring it down to the crimson and stop. Once again, the blue is so much stronger than the crimson, it'll just eat up all the crimson in your world. There, maybe in our world here and there, there's a little stringy cloud that lives out here. So just tap in a little cloud shape wherever you want it, doesn't much matter. Little clouds are free, they just float around, have a good time. Maybe, shoot, maybe there's a little one right there. I don't know. You make the decision. Now, we'll take a clean, dry brush and we just blend all this together very gently. Three hairs and some air. Just blend it together. And that easy, we have a fantastic little sky. Tell you what, do we have that brush? It's got a little blue on it. Let's just take, maybe we'll have a little water down here. Then again, maybe we won't. But let's just put a little blue in to see what happens, because we don't care. As you know, we don't make mistakes. <laughs> we just have happy accidents. So anything that happens here, we can live with it. We don't care. That's the beauty of this, or the joy of it. There, about like that, and that's all we're looking for. All right, now I get to clean a brush. That's really the most fun part of the whole technique. Just shake off the excess <laughs> and beat the devil out of it. That really is fun. I have people that write and say they have no desire to ever paint but they've just went out and bought them a brush so they can beat it because it makes them feel better. <laughs> it is nothing wrong with that. Let's take a little black, a little bit of blue, and be right back, get a little white, mix them together. I'm looking for a, a light color, predominantly blue, maybe even a little lighter. It's our world, so we can make it any shade we want. Cut off a little roll of paint, about like that, and maybe, Yep, we back in here lives just a little hill, a little mountain, far away, quiet little mountain. Just a 
just hangs around back here and has a good time all day. There. I like it. We can take it to the brush, grab that color, and pull it. Pull it. Because that canvas is wet, you can move color here. Based with this just right on the outline, add a little white to it. I want it to be very soft, very, very soft. Just like it's sort of floating around in the mist far away. There. That's about all we're looking for in that one. Now maybe, maybe there's several different planes. I like, I like a lot of distance in paintings, so I have a lot of planes in the paintings. Let's take Prussian blue, some black, alizarin crimson. Put a little Van Dyke in there too. A little Van Dyke brown, doesn't matter. About like it. Pull it out flat, get our little roll of paint. And maybe right under here somewhere, maybe there's a, a little mountain that lives right there. Just a, just a nice little mountain, a little friendly guy. But in a basic shape, we're only concerned with the top edge. We could care less what's happening anywhere else in this mountain. Once again, grab our two-inch brush and pull that. I want it to just disappear over there in the mist somewhere. We don't even know where it goes. I don't think we care. It doesn't matter in our world where it goes. There. Yeah. Let's take a little titanium white. I'm going to put the least little touch of bright red in it. Since there's some pink in the sky, maybe there's a hint of pink in our mountain color. A little roll of paint. Let's go up in here and touch. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure at all. Just let it float. Let it float and play very gently. Very, very gently. Now then. A little bit of white and blue mixed together. I'm using a little bit of thalo blue in there, with a little black in it. A little tiny roll of paint. Go back in here. Put the indication of a few little shadows on these little mountains that live back here. That's about all we're looking for. Make sure that brush is clean, dry. Now I want to create mist down at the base. So tap. Tap the mountain, following the angles. Most important that you follow those angles that you put in there. Over here, follow this direction. Now, very lightly, just graze it. Lift it. Lift it. That takes out all the little tap marks, blends everything together. And that easy. That easy. We have, let's, let's have some fun. I'm going to take the fan brush, put a little, same little blue color on it, just a little. Back up in here. Maybe at the base of our mountain, just touch. Just touch like that. Da, 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 we don't know where it goes. Now, snap it up. By that touch, just give it a quick little upward lift. La, da, 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 da. And a little downward pull. Start to say a downward lift, but I guess that's a contradiction of words. And very lightly go across the bottom. I'll make it a little bit darker right at the base so it stands out. Oh yeah, that's better, that's better. Now, a little liquid white on the knife, pull it out flat. I'm gonna put a little bright red in that too, just enough, just enough to give it a little, little pinkish hue. If you look real close, I have to really look for it though. Now I want a little water line far away. Far, far away. There, something about like that. Let's build a big mountain. Shoot. Going back to that dark color we had. Pull the paint out flat. Once again, our little roll of paint lives right on the edge here. And let's come right up in here. Let's get this is your bravery test. Maybe what the heck? There's a big mountain. He lives. Maybe he's got an old jagged arm that sticks out like that. Mountains grow ever which way. Have fun with them. They're one of the most interesting and fun things to paint, I think, in this whole technique. And 
I've painted hundreds of mountains in the many shows that we've made. And, you know, people still write and say, do more mountains, Bob. I like the mountains, my favorite. There. But any of these paintings that we do here, if you don't want the mountains in them, leave them out. You can do the painting without having the mountain in it. It's no big deal. by Michelangelo at birth to be a pretty good painter. You can do this. Maybe let's get crazier. Maybe in our world, maybe there's another little pond here, a little lake. If you want something like that, all you gotta do is pull straight down with a little bit of color and then go across just enough to give it a watery sheen. Sometimes you can take a little bit of white don't do this too much, though. just a little. You can put a little, like a little shine on the water. <sighs> Easy, not too much, not too much. Just enough to <sighs> give it a, give it a nice shimmer. It can overdo, it can overdo. Easy, because it gets good and you don't want to stop. There, little water line right there. We'll just have to decide where all these things live. Okay, we need some, we need some highlights on this mountain. Doesn't matter, we'll just use whatever color we got going here. There. Big mountain, strong mountain. Want him to have a lot of character. We don't like wimpy little mountains, we like big mountains. Of course, sometimes we paint little wimpy mountains. That's all right. Any kind that you want in your world, you can do them here. There, no pressure. I know you get tired of hearing me say that, but over and over and over again, I get letters from people saying that I'm having trouble making, making the snow break on the mountain here. Normally, it's one of two things. You're applying too much pressure or you're using a paint that's not thick enough. I'll tell you what, let's have a little shadow back here. You need a very dry, dry paint. I can't say that enough times either. It's most important. It really does make a difference. There, maybe, look here, look here, watch. Maybe there's a little, mm -mm, right there. I don't know. You decide. A little place for the mountain goat to walk around the mountain there. He needs a little place like that, don't laugh. Yeah. He likes to go on a little Sunday hike, come around the mountain, see what's on the other side. There. And just begin playing with highlights and shadows and adding them in wherever. Wherever you think they should be. There's one right there. See? By putting a shadow in it, it pops that up, makes it look big, strong. All right. Let's take two inch brush and once again, once again, I want to create the illusion of mist down here just by tapping. There. Maybe, maybe, yeah. There we go. Maybe there's a little tree that lives right down here. The whole little forest lives right at the edge of this mountain. Comes down. Do this in layers if you want to put like, like there's little little tree ranges and then maybe maybe it comes right on down like that whatever you come back put another range in but see you can just go on and on and on 
and create all kind of depth and distance in your world. That's what makes it so fantastic. There are no limits to this. There, absolutely no limits. You're limited only by your imagination and your willingness to practice. Recently in Daytona Beach, Florida, we had a reunion of all of our instructors and over 150 instructors came from all over the world, all over the world. Even, even my first certified Japanese instructor, Misuko, came all the way from Japan to be with us. We had people from Puerto Rico, Canada. Boy, the joy of painting is universal, isn't it? All right. Now, but we spent a whole week in Daytona Beach, and we painted together, and we had a good time. Boy, we had a lot of fun. And then we went to, we went to New Smyrna Beach, and all of our instructors went out and painted. The public was invited. We spent a whole day out in the park painting. We all got sunburned. Even my ball spot on top of my head got burned. There, but we had a, we had a lot of fun. Okay, I'm just wiping the knife on a, on a paper towel here. Let's take Prussian blue, black, brown, alizarin crimson, and throw in some sap green. Boy, we got a conglomeration going there. All the dark colors, basically. Let me wipe off the old knife. And you know me. Shoot, I like them trees. Let's do a tree. Use a fan brush, load it full of color. A lot of paint. A lot of paint. My little squirrels have to have a tree to live in. So let's give them one. Right there. Doop. There comes a tree. It lives in your fan brush. There they are. Just let them pop right out. Let them pop right out. A little more paint. When you're going over, like here, where there's a lot of paint already on the canvas, you may have to put a little, a little, not much, a little bit of paint thinner on your brush and go through the paint. Because our golden rule, a thin paint, will stick to a thick paint. So if you thin this, you go right over the top of the other without it mixing totally together. And you know, if your doll mixes together, you end, up, you end up being a mud mixer. And all of us who've painted have mixed a little bit of mud. There. Boy, I'm covering up most of my mouth here. I didn't mean to do all that, but it doesn't matter. One more. One more little tree lives right out here. Whatever. I'll tell you, maybe. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Sometimes we get crazy here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe this is a, maybe we're up high looking down. Let's take some of that and pull it over. There's another, maybe it comes, maybe it comes all the way around. I don't know. Just pick up some of that tree color. There. Let's just fill this in. You could do this with a paint roller, it doesn't matter really doesn't matter but it's a super way to practice do it do it this way and you get a little practice there don't waste don't waste your strokes there we are now let's take that brush we made the trees with the color still on it I'm go right through cad yellow yellow ochre little Indian yellow and because it has blue and black when we touch that yellow we get green let's go back up in here and let's put some highlights right on our trees. There they go. Gotta make those little noises. Some over here. Just a few. Just a few. Big tree needs some too. Big old tree needs some. There. A little bit back in here too. Just some indications. Now, I know. Changed my mind. <laughs> you can do that. It's your world. Take a little dark sienna, a little Van Dyke brown, mix them together. We need some big rocks that live back in here. So we'll just put some little doers in here like that, wherever we want them. Take a little white, a little bit of that brown that we was using. Mix it together, make a little highlight color, and barely touch, barely touch white and brown, or brown and white. This. 
we'll put grass over the top and some of these will show through and it'll look like little rocks that live out here. There. Okay. Use a two inch brush tapped right into a little of that same color. Just sap green, yellow, all those colors. And let's just begin tapping in the indication of all kinds of little land areas. Have them come hanging right over these rocks. If we don't have rocks here, just let them hang right over. Hang right over. This is where you create the lay of the land or the, the way the, the land flows. Sometimes, oh, look at that, see? It comes right on down like that and it creates a whole different plane. Now a little rabbit can hide down in there and look over at us. Yeah. There. Alright. There. Just tap though. Don't let the brush slide. Just tap. Just tap. There. Isn't that a super way of making little grassy areas? I like that a lot. I like that a lot. There. Maybe yeah, comes right over. A little touch of the bright red now and then too. Not much bright red, just enough to dull the color a little bit. Red and green make brown so it dulls. There, see there? All kinds of little doers. But now the little rocks still look like they're in there. That's all there is to it. And you can put a little highlight. Sometimes I dip the brush into a very small amount of liquid white because that it brightens the it brightens the color and it makes it thinner so it'll stick right over the top. See that little ridge of paint right there? We're pushing. There's one just like it on the brush. So try to get that. Now we'll go up here and use that little ridge of paint. Maybe our light's coming through here. We want to sparkle that edge. See you can sparkle little parts of it. But don't sparkle it all. If you sparkle it all and it loses, it loses its sharpness too much. Just a little. Just think where light would zing through there and play. Sometimes I even, I even take maybe a little bit of pure white and put on there, just to brighten it, but not very often. Like if light zinging through there, maybe over here be a little brighter too. This is a very nice little painting. It's very easy. It gives you a lot of practice with, with just about all the equipment. You get to do mountains. You get to do all of the, the little foothills. And if there's a secret to this style of painting, or any style of painting, it doesn't matter. It's just practice. That's all. Just practice. The more you practice, the easier it becomes. So you can lift up, make it look like some little grassy areas back in there, wherever you want. Shoot, I think that's about it. That makes a pretty nice little painting. Let's sign this one. Let's take a little paint thinner. Now I use bright red, but you use any color you want. See, see how thin that is? It's almost like ink. Turn the bristles. I'm still getting a lot of letters saying I'm having trouble signing the painting, making the paint thinner. It's almost like ink. A lot of paint, let's go up in here. Decide where you want to sign the painting, and all you have to do then, if the paint's thin enough, it will literally just flow right over top of the other paint. This, and I'm lucky, I have a very short name, so it didn't take but a second. And that's about all you have to do. I really hope you've enjoyed not only this painting, but seeing my little squirrels. As I say, I had both a, a little gray squirrel and a fox squirrel, so you could see the difference between them. So from my little squirrel friends and everybody here at the studio, we'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless my friend.